Today's episode is with Ian Bick. Now, Ian Bick owned and ran his own nightclub at 18 years old. I'm running a nightclub in Danbury. I'm the youngest teen nightclub owner, probably in the, I would say, in the world. I owned, I was the legal owner of this club at 18 years old. We were booking Hugh Jacks, Steve Aoki, the Chainsmokers, all these big names. So you may be asking, how could a teenager have enough money to own and run a nightclub? Well, that's the rub. Ian borrowed money from investors, and before he was able to make enough money in order to pay them back, the FBI kicked in his front door and took him to court. He decided to take it to trial, and... I lost trial, club was failing, and the judge ultimately sent me to prison, federal prison, for three years. Ian has since come home, and now he runs a podcast called Locked In with Ian Bick across several platforms like YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. HBO also did a documentary on Ian called Generation Hustle. So this was also the maiden voyage of my mobile podcast studio. I drove about six hours up to Connecticut in the rain. We set up in the rain. You can even hear the raindrops on the roof of the camper during this interview. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you enjoy this episode of Chopping It Up. Spanking monkey. That's what's up, man. I appreciate you making the time for me today, bro. Of course. You know what I mean? Uh, It's easy to get a hold of you. It's easy to contact you, and you always respond. I I appreciate that. Um, I'm the same type of person. So, yeah, we just moved everything over here from your studio. (laughs) What do you think of the little? I like it, dude. It's it's very cozy. I like the artwork, too. All the monkeys. Right? Yeah. Where do you get the art from? Uh, Everything I bought on here is from Amazon. Oh, wow. Believe it or not. Yeah, uh, but I just started dope. looking for the, and I noticed the pictures in yours were similar. They were done similar, right? Yeah, I got it on iCanvas.com. Okay. Yeah. No, I like this. It's really cool. Right. I, like I just thought of going all monkeys, man, you know? The shelves are dope, too. So I'm going to tell you how that happened. My daughter was out here with me. We were shooting and doing some testing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what if we take these and, and paint them? Because they had a couple of stickers on them. She's like, why don't we just sticker bomb them? So we sat here eight hours putting stickers on those two. And then from there, it grew into two more shelves. And what are yeah. those for? Nothing. They're just tables. <laughs> I was I was selling pills to some dude one time in a trailer park, and those were on his front porch. Really? And they were black. And I was like, dude, what are you doing with those tables? He's like, you want them? Give me a pill. I gave him a Xanax or something and took them home. That's been twenty years ago. And you just kept them at home. Yeah. And then I, I mean, I <laughs> use them in I use them in rooms for years. You okay. know what I mean? Bedside tables, stuff like that. And then. They just turned into this, you know, everything evolves, right? Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so for my hometown folks, man, give me a little summary of your journey. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The club, prison. Um, so, I mean, essentially in a nutshell, I got into uh, promoting when I was a young kid. I was always like a hustler, entrepreneurial type kid and um, started doing teen nights, making great money in high school. I was 16, making like 10 grand in a night. And uh, that involved into me wanting to do concerts, taking it to the next level. I was very ambitious. I wanted to reach new heights. And to do that, you kind of need an, an investors because uh, these shows could cost 50, 60, sometimes $100,000. Okay. So you're getting somebody to put the money up for yeah, you? Yeah. So okay. I started raising money. Friends, family raised like $120,000, got it all together. Um, and the first show failed. Oh. Epically. Oh, man. But I thought I was making money. I had partners. Uh, picture me like the hedge fund. I'd raise the money and invest it into other like promoters. We didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know anything about accounting or finances or investments. Um, I had promised everyone their money back to get them to invest. And right. I was 17, 18 years old at the time. So I'm thinking the first show is making money. I'm telling everyone it's making money. You know, we get a limo, get hotels. The first concert bring everyone there it looks packed but the looks could be deceiving in the concert industry um you know i just i thought it was it and it wasn't and so at that point you know i'm i'm not even 18 years old yet and i'm at the crossroads of you know do i tell them the truth that it didn't make money but then they think that i i you know it um it did made money and then i lied to them and i'm keeping the profits Mm -hmm. Um, or do I tell them it, you know, I tell them it did make money right. and then everything's fine and, uh, I'll make it back on the next one. Cause we had other shows and that's ultimately the path I chose. And it was the wrong path because that just caused a domino effect. Okay. You know, that one moment in time affected my whole entire life. Right. If I didn't make that decision, we wouldn't be sitting here right now. Right. 
So it's I'm very interested and curious about like cause and effect and you know when you when you make one move because it always starts with one move and some people like when I ask people that on my show, um, some people in the comments were like, well, it wasn't just one thing, you know, it was a buildup of why the person went to prison. Well, it all started somewhere, right. like one move as a family or what their family might have did to them or one traumatic experience, right. something was the cause that affected them to choose the path that brought them to prison or brought them to addiction. Right. You don't just get born, you don't, get, you know, you're not a brand new child with the mindset of I'm going to commit crime or right. I'm going to fall into addiction. Something's triggered along the way. Right. So that was my trigger. And that just, you know, put me into the spiral of losing money and chasing good, bad money with good money and lying. And it was just a whole mess. Um, for like the next year. And, and eventually uh, my friends and family were all done with the lies and they went to the local police who escalated it to the, to the feds. And <sighs> by 2015, you know, I'm 21 years old. I mean, I'm 19 years old at the time. And I got um, indicted on 15 federal charges, went to trial, lost half the counts. And this is a federal trial. And right. during, while I'm, while I'm on trial you know i'm running a nightclub in danbury i'm the youngest teen nightclub owner probably in the i would say in the world i owned i was the legal owner of this club at 18 years old we were booking hugh jacks steve aoki the chain smokers all these big names Mm -hmm. and um you know i lost trial club was failing and the judge ultimately sent me to prison federal prison for three years three years three years yeah yeah man and when you go into prison, like, how's that work for you? Like, first day of jail, man, how are they looking at you? Because you were a little pudger, then you've been working out. Congratulations, because you're killing it on that shit, bro. Thank you, I've bro. been paying attention to that. That's awesome. And Do you thank think... you for the uh, the hand wraps. Right, I hope you use them, bro. I'm gonna, yeah. no, dude, I told you, when I got home, I'm putting them in my gym bag. I'm going to get rid awesome. of the other ones. I actually haven't been boxing since November, but I'm going to get back oh, into okay. it. Um, just busy, the holidays and, yeah. and everything, but I still go to the gym in the mornings. Gotcha. Um, dude, it's hard sometimes when you're juggling all this. We were just talking about the gym. It, it could be hard, you yes. know, when you're when you're dealing with everything and this and that and just, you know, so I'm working on prioritizing that. But I at least do something physical. I walk my dog or I go for a run or I do something. You start your day that way. Yeah, I try, I try my yeah. best to do some push-ups or anything yeah. like that. And that's what's crazy is because for me it's the same way. Like I start my day that way and I feel great, but then I choose not to, right? Yeah, it's like, I'm working on that? now just – shutting off and disconnecting by a certain time at night so i could just go to sleep uh because my brain in this business Mm -hmm. it's always you're always doing something you're always doing Mm -hmm. an upload and edit or there's like you don't just finish a to-do list and then that's it then you have the next week's Mm -hmm. worth it's it's always repeating and it's Mm -hmm. always adding more if you have clients or, or whatever like i have my show that i do three episodes a week and then i have other people that i do shows so i'm probably editing you know 10 podcasts a week making clips for them, doing the posting, doing the optimization. A lot of time. How much time do you think that takes a week? I'm probably working 80 to 100 hours a week. Right. I've always said, how much time did you spend loyally working for someone else? I mean, I did, all my life I've always been a hustler, you know, um, a hard worker. That's probably everyone's biggest misconception about me. Um, But I had a corporate job at 16, you know, working at a banquet center. I worked for my dad's catering company. Um, I worked at a tent rental place, setting up tents and dropping off rentals. And then when I got out of prison, oh, I even worked at a Chinese restaurant while I owned the club. I was making nine bucks an hour cash at a Chinese restaurant, promoting shows from my phone. I'd go to the bathroom right. and just go on my phone. Um, and then I'd run the club. I was a hustler, you know? Right. And then when I got out, I worked at Whole Foods for almost four years. Worked right. my way up from a line cook to the manager. Right, but every one of those jobs, you showed up every day. You probably did the best you could. You didn't call out all the time, right? Never called out. I, right. When I, They would have to send me home. When I had right. the flu, COVID, anything, they would literally have to send me home. Right. Because I just didn't, you know, I just... But, you know. but now you've learned how to work that hard for yourself instead of for other people. I got tired of making money for other people. Because yeah. I'm a loyal dude, too. I'm going to show up to work. I'm not going to be sick unless I'm absolutely jacked. I don't call in. And I just got tired of working for other people and seeing them have 10 times what I have while I was struggling. Yeah, I would encourage anyone, work for yourself. Find something you're passionate about and do it. And everything else will fall into place. You don't have to be good at business to be a business person. You need to find something you're really good at or want to be good at and be passionate about it. And there's people that can help you do the rest. There's accountants, there's small business, there's this, there's this, you know? 
if you're look at the like the the people that are hands on contractors, welders, people with those types of jobs, not all of them are sitting there doing the accounting and mm-hmm. the secretarial work. They mm-hmm. have someone do that. They yeah. just pour their heart and soul into their passion Whatever and everything like else falls into place. My dad always said, if you found something that you love to do and then found a way to make money at it, you was going to be one of the happiest people on the planet. Exactly. I don't reason like, I started tattooing because I loved it. Yeah. What I do now, I don't feel like it's work. Right. I mean, it, it, it gets stressful and frustrating, but it's not like I could turn off like. I'm always like on my laptop and working, but I could shut that off. It's not like I'm I'm so far ahead where I That's what I was just getting I ready to say is this you're comfortable. Second. Yeah, like I right. can move this like if you said, Hey, let's go to dinner, like I could go to dinner. If you say this or that, right. like I'm flexible. You wanna go to dinner? Uh, I gotta have uh, uh then yeah. you really can't go to dinner. No, but you know I'm just kidding. Mean, yeah. I'm just messing with you. Like I I'm in, in general, but I do have plans tonight. Right. But my schedule's just so booked. That's the biggest problem in my life right now. Everything's fucking scheduled. Like, uh-huh. we put this on the books like a month ago. Right, we did. So that's the only thing. Like, I'm very constrained to, Me to my schedule. Me too. But I try to keep, like, my Friday and Saturday nights open. Okay. Um, and everything else just kind of falls apart. And now you're place. spending with family, chilling, just yeah. taking time to yourself. I don't really go out. Um, I don't, okay. I don't so do So no that. partying, no drinking, no drugs. Because most people mm-hmm. I've been talking to has been drug addicts. I drink socially. Okay. Mm-hmm. But you never had a problem with addiction? Never. I mean, uh, maybe addiction to gambling, I guess you could uh, go down that rabbit hole. Okay. But that, it wasn't, uh, um, I mean, I, I, I don't gamble. I don't do anything like that. But. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, you've talked to a million addicts, I know. Doing these podcasts, you you've heard a lot of stories, yeah. and like, what 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 is your suggestion for the people listening? Like, is you know, get some help. What do you what would you tell people? What do you tell people on a regular basis? Um, I don't really give advice. I just okay. let people tell the story of the people that have recovered, and I think that's the advice in itself. Mm-hmm. You listen to someone that's overcome addiction, and that can inspire someone that's going through addiction to see that hey, there's something on the other side. You know, there's something to fight for. Because a lot of times when you're struggling with something, you don't really see your your visions blurred. Mm -hmm. You don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I remember all the times when I was feeling overwhelmed and stressed and and, and just everything. You know, what kept me going was seeing the light. And not everyone has that ability to see that bigger picture or the light in that sense. So I think these stories that we showcase give people the idea that there is hope. You know, that there's someone that has literally been at rock bottom mm-hmm. from getting raped in prison or mm-hmm. over de- overdosing or anything, and they're able to overcome that and have a successful life. Mm-hmm. I think that's the advice. Absolutely. Yeah, man, that's kind of why I started doing the podcast and thing, too, because I watched what you were doing. I mean, honestly, like, you're an inspiration for real because you've been able to get in, grind, and keep going. A lot of people don't stick with YouTube. They don't stick with the content creation. You know, you did go viral on like your third video or something, though, right? <laughs> that helped a lot, but right? Not on YouTube, though. YouTube, right. it took me a while. Okay, but so building YouTube versus building TikTok's you, a big difference. YouTube's the hardest channel to grow on. Right, because it's yeah. so much TikTok's uploaded. TikTok's the fastest, but mm-hmm. YouTube's more realistic. Mm-hmm. Um, TikTok's hit or miss, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but TikTok, I owe my career to. Okay. Like, it's the one that got me started just sharing the stories and the virality and building a podcast. Because it's so hard to build a podcast. I mean, right. you see it, you're doing it now. Um, it's just a grind. I hit this. Oh, I was wondering what the hell. Yeah. No, um, it's it's a grind, man. It, it's hard mm-hmm. work. It and is. It's a lot of work for no results in the beginning. It, Facts. It, it, That's where I'm really at right not. now. Yeah, and it could be discouraging, you know. Um, I mean, I got. I think had I started the podcast with no social media, it would have been even harder. Mm-hmm. Like I built. 100,000 followers on my TikTok before launching the podcast, but I grinded to get that 100,000 followers on TikTok. Right, like three times a day for three months? Exactly, just constantly posting. And those, you know, from August to January, I saw no money. And there was like a problem with my tax form for Facebook. So I, all the money I had made, I made like six or $7,000 and paid me. And I put my job, I'm maxing out my credit cards. Then I get that money in January of last year, the mm-hmm. six grand spent already. Mm-hmm. So it goes out. And then I didn't start making any real money on the podcast till like June. I think my first YouTube check was like three grand in April. That was my first three grand after okay. I got monetized. Uh, but it was, you know, about you a month from, after we met. Yeah, you look from August to April of, of no money pretty much, you know? 
Right, it, just doing something. Yeah, just uh, I had a feeling, you know. And you I were still putting money into it too. You were renting a studio. At you that had point, to buy I, a computer. I uh, I split. I would split the profits with them. We, it was a gross. Oh, okay. It was a uh, revenue split. That's how I got in the door. Like a lot of people were like, "Oh, how do you have the money to start?" Listen, anything could always be negotiated. Right. If you believe in yourself and you're willing to take the bet on you, and you don't have the money, you could find someone that's going to help you and see that passion. Thanks. And that's what I hope I could give to someone someday when I'm in the position to do that. Right. And I try to do that now with people locally. Like I'll, I'll take on like AJ, who you met earlier. Mm-hmm. Like I don't charge them to do the podcast. I just do things like that. It's not right. something I could necessarily do for everyone, but people will come in and I, you know, I help out when I can. It's all about giving back. Right. But that's it. You know, it feels good to do that. And it, as long as you're giving out good vibes, you're going to get them back. Right. It's kind of what we to. hope for. Yeah. You have to, man. Right. You, you can't like, I feel like when I was young and in the phys, uh, music business and everything, everything used to be transactional. Mm-hmm. Like you want this. Oh, you got to pay this, this and that. Mm-hmm. So fuck all that. You know, not everything's a transaction. It's about relationships, too. Right. And then going into jail, everything's a super transaction. Yeah. Like I see a lot of people on TikTok, like, they want to charge for every little advice. If anyone wants stuff to, to grow or anything or this, oh, okay, you know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, they don't. They don't need it. They want a course. They want to sell you a yeah, course. Yeah, they want to, they want I don't to, want to do that. I don't right. want to sell someone a course. Right, it's knowledge that I have. I'm gonna give it to you. Yeah, that's one thing I found out about the tattooing industry as well. When I started tattooing, nobody wanted to teach me. Nobody wanted to help me learn or help me make money off of it. So I just did it myself. Like, fuck it, I'm gonna do this regardless. But it's weird how people don't want to help. Now I'll help anybody. You want to ask me a question about how tattooing works? I'll answer for you. Yeah, what I realized about the people that are willing to pay for the advice are also probably not going to use it. Right. Because they're not, you Looking know, they bought the, their way to it. It wasn't the a, easy way. It was, They took the easy way to do yeah. it. And a lot of them don't, you know, it like everyone shortcut. wants to be an influencer. Everyone wants to be on YouTube. Everyone wants to be a TikToker. Right. But do you know what you have to give up to, to do that? It's a fucking grind. I have two phones. I have two phones, one's for clients and posting. I'm always looking at my analytics. When I wake up in the middle of the night or in the morning, the first thing I do is check my phone, make a post. I'm doing, you know, it's just a constant grind right. and keeping track of everything. Right. So do you really want to be an influencer? You know, yeah, and, it's and tough, bro. Don't I'm, realize that. I'm failing miserably. You're not failing. You're you know looking. I mean? You got a studio. You're making strides. You have good thumbnails that you're even going to improve more. Mm-hmm. And Appreciate the your views aren't at zero. You know, right. I looked at it this way. Like I, I also sometimes have people say, oh, your episode's a little slower. It's only at 10,000 views or whatever the first 24 hours. I look at it to a year ago, you know, January, February, when we first started, it took us almost 72 hours, 48 to 72 hours just to get 1,000 views. Mm-hmm. So now I'm able to get 10,000 views within the first 48 to 72 hours. How the fuck could I ever complain you about that? that? Not, yeah, you got to yeah. call that growth, right? That's in, that's in a year, you mm-hmm. know, 200,000 subscribers in a year. So where are we going to be at next year? Then the mm-hmm. bar will be set, okay, episodes are hitting 20K. It's all about consistency, right. you know? And you look at that. and you, Right, so that's what, what I'm trying know. to get to is with the consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Knocking my mic down Tighten us up, Jamie. Tighten us up. Tighten us up. Tighten us up. Right uh, so, yeah, man. Uh, you know, I guess you probably told your prison stories a million times. Um, anything like you feel like you learned something from prison? What's one of the main things you learned from going to prison that you still do every day? Um, learned, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I guess I, uh, make my bed kind of the same way. Like, you know how you would have in Funny, the feds, I do that too. you had that extra white blanket. Mm-hmm. So you had like your sheet or whatever. And then you had your white blanket that you fold at the end of the mm-hmm. bed. So I'll tuck in my comforter. I have my sheet in my comforter that I tuck and fold at the top. Mm-hmm. And then I have that another blanket, a throw blanket, which was the white blanket in the feds uh, on the back. Um, so and I don't know how guys in the feds would use to sleep on that. Some guys would use it as a sheet. Right. That's so uncomfortable. I need like a linen sheet. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I just covered up with a sheet most of the time too. They had to mow wool blankets and stuff. Yeah. The too. wool that was it, and yeah. then you put that on the end. Yeah. Itchy is crazy. It, yeah. Is I, I I couldn't fuck with that, but that's what uh that's what I do. I'd say that's probably like my only habit. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, that I really kept from prison. Maybe like. I don't know. It's just, I don't know. <laughs> right. I think uh, one thing I learned is like being OCD about stuff. I'm super clean. I make my bed every morning. There's certain things that you do learn inside, though. It's 
that's kind of what I was getting at because uh, I had no structure to life. I just ran and did whatever the hell I wanted to do. But jail and halfway houses and stuff like that did give me a little structure. You know, you got up every day, you had things to do. Mm -hmm. Like you were already pre-structured because you was working all the time before you went in. I was just Yeah, I was always and even in prison, like I didn't wake up too early. Like mm -hmm. I slept in unless it was count, you know. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I just slept. Like I wasn't really a structured person, I guess. I I think prison made me less structured. Hmm, okay. Um, I mean I was I was also at Lowe's in camp, so it's a lot different. I right. know like in the higher security prisons you gotta be on call, on watch it. Like you gotta move differently. Right. At the camp you go just hang out, chill. I mean Prison made me more athletic, you know, walking around, running, playing sports. I was on the basketball team at the camp. Um, I was played softball for the first time in my life. No shit. I look forward to that. You know, it was yeah. a lot of fun. Volleyball. I loved volleyball. It, it was, was my shit. That's all you do all summer long at the camp. It was it yeah. was great. You know, it was a great time. To me, that part was in prison, you know? Yeah. Th there was fun times, too. We played kickball one year on Christmas. All the white boys played kickball at Lee County in the mud. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget that, you know what I mean? Because you're there for whatever it was, six years I was there. And every other Christmas I don't remember, they probably sucked. Mm -hmm. But I remember that one. It stood out. It was a like good time in prison. It's hard to say that sometimes. You guys right? had, like, the whole uh, kickball court and whatnot? We had the softball field. Okay. We took the softball field. You and know, we, I think we played kickball one time, too. Yeah, and, and first we ran the bases, and then I made it where everybody had to slide into every base in the mud, you know, inches of water, and then I made it where we had to run the bases backwards. Oh, we had a blast. Every time there was a, a, a wreck call, everybody was coming out like, look at these crazy – we had our khakis on. We didn't wear our good stuff. We wore our khakis, state shit. That's awesome. Um. So I wanted to ask the, the the time of scene question. I guess you've kind of already answered like that one point where you made that one choice. If you could go back to that one point and give yourself some advice, would you? What would you say? I would say just be honest. Um, I'm very like honest now when it comes to. I, I think the the biggest thing I learned is you can't like people lie genuinely like about whatever, right? Like small lies, this and that. But when it comes to money, that's the one thing you don't want to lie about. If you have to lie. Like, I get it. But when it comes to money, you want to stay far away because that's right. just when anything gets messy because people plan their lives around that. Like, if you're saying, hey, you're going to pay someone on this day, the people are planning. The person, the recipient's mm -hmm. planning for you to, to get that money on that day. They're counting on it. Money is a, you know, it's, it's, it's a very interesting concept and thing, you know? So you, it's just... It, it to, to when you think about it and 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 you break it down like it's a tool and it's a resource, but it could also cause like a lot of problems and and trouble. Absolutely. Um. So lying just makes it even worse. Greed and necessity, though, right? Yeah. So it's like mm -hmm. money's necessary, and then if you get greedy, you're just gonna. It's a necessary evil. Yes. It um. Is. But I would, if I could take that back, I would. But I also wouldn't change the outcome of where I am now. Right. Because, because I'd of... probably be working for someone else. I don't know what else I would have mm -hmm. kind of started, but then you never really know. That's mm -hmm. you, you know, it's hindsight we're talking about. Man, the butterfly effect too. You don't know what would happen if you did change. Yeah. It, what so would happen next. All but... I could do now is just you know you learn from those lessons. You don't make the same mistakes, and every day you try to be a little better. I mean, I pay a thousand bucks a month in restitution which most people don't pay. Mm -hmm. um, how much you, how long you got to do that? Well, I mean, I still owe $415,000. $415,000, and you pay 1000 a week, so... 1000 a month, up. yeah. So it was like 40, 50 years. But, <laughs> you know, compared to some of these other guys that owe millions of dollars, okay. 400000 isn't a lot. And if I get one movie deal, one book deal, I'll just pay it off. You know, I'm not concerned about yeah. that. But at least I'm actively trying. Some right, and you're also not to, shooting for twenty thousand dollars when you need a hundred. You're shooting for two fifty when you need a hundred. Yeah, and so people, some people that owe money, like I interview people that went to prison for fraud. They're paying fucking pennies. They're paying fifty or a hundred bucks a month. I'd love to see the stats of how many people in the country are paying a thousand dollars a month towards restitution. Right, because I, I guarantee you it's very low. It's got to be, but not that many people got away with a half million dollars either. The, the, yeah, they got so, away with millions. So how did the, how did the half million that was what the people had invested in, and that's why the restitution came out because you have to pay the people back that you borrowed from. Yeah, that was their out of pocket loss. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the, the initial investment was what, and then you just kept on getting more money from them. Um. So altogether, it was about like the initial investment was almost five hundred thousand. Okay. Yeah. 
Damon, you're a 17 year old kid and you got that G in you, so you talk to these people into giving you that much money. I did, yeah. I mean, they believed in me, and I thought I, I, I it wasn't, I never had ill intent in any right, of my decisions. Right. I, I never took someone's money with ever having the thought that they were not going to get that money back. Right. So that's where I, that's why I went to trial. That's why I'll always differ from what people say about me. Okay. And, and the government's perspective, because I didn't intention once, means a lot. Exactly, I didn't once ever take someone's money without having the intent to not give it back. So every time you just borrow more, just thinking I'm gonna make enough to get this back. I'm that gonna was, make enough was, to yeah, get this straight. I always was convinced. I Damn, just kept I lost stalling. again, but I'm gonna get enough this time. <laughs> exactly. So that's kind of that gambling mentality you was talking about earlier too, though, right? Because you just kept on yeah. betting it, you kept on chancing. Yeah. Did you gamble in prison? Yeah, I I used to play uh, CeeLo. Okay. And then I ran the blackjack table. Okay. Um, but CeeLo, man, whew, I was cleaning boys up. Like them dice. Yeah, I love them dice. When as soon as I found dice, we would do that shit three or four in the morning. I that got me through like six months of my bed. I'd walk in a sack of mackerels, walk out with like two big bags, all these books <laughs> of stamps. I probably made five grand. Nice. Uh, doing dice. Never gambled, man. It wasn't a gamble. Yeah, you were telling me about that. Not a gamble. Yeah, and then uh, any I would bet for anything. We would play basketball, and I'm the least athletic person in the prison. I'm saying. 200 bucks if I can make this basket. Like, which is fucking stupid shit, right. you know? But Made I would always get lucky. I remember I owed a guy like a thousand bucks, and then I was like, um, double or nothing on like a ridiculous half court shot. And I somehow hit it, and I would owe the guy two grand. Like, just a crazy shit right. like that, you right. know? But that was just like the. That thing's still not right. That was just like the, the wild, crazy side of me. Right. You know, I, I just, I don't do any of that. Don't do none of that no more. No. Hmm. Yeah, man, I just come sniff, a long I way, just dude. Sniff my cocaine. No, I'm kidding. Oh, right. I don't do cocaine. Right, just small lines of cocaine. <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm glad I never got into drugs. Yeah, uh, I, I was do thinking wish about I it sold today. drugs in the club, though. I would have made a killing. Yeah, you definitely would have. <laughs> yeah. So, like, what was your, what did your bank account, what did your commissary account look like in prison? Like, what were your numbers in prison? It all depended. Like, when you're in there for fraud, you can't really keep too much sitting there. So, like, my dad would send like three, four hundred bucks, and mm -hmm. I would spend it all right. like on commissary because then they'll raise your FRP payments, financial responsibility payments. Um, but I was paying, I think, like 100 bucks a month in prison. Mm -hmm. um, but I was getting, yeah, probably four or 500 bucks a month. And when I first got there, I got a little more because um, I got the, you know, MP3 player. You got to get the boots. Like when you get to prison, it's expensive right. to get everything you need. Now, if they didn't I had have to go, MP3, they had MP3 players there, yeah, so you could download MP3, songs. Yeah, God, I and they charge like a dollar fifty a song. Oh yeah, I've been all crazy. over that. Shit. All edited music. Oh, and, I'd have been all over and that. And then shit. guys would start converting the MP3 players into chargers for the phones. Okay. Uh, you would use the MP3 player, plug it in, then you'd plug your phone battery into it. They had like these the Unicor guys, because mm -hmm. I was at a Unicor prison, Fort mm -hmm. Dix. And um, this is where it was easy to get the phones in, right? It wasn't like yeah, oh, not as easy as a camp, but they were still accessible. Right, they were paying like two grand. Never for a seen phone. a cell phone when I was in. Of course, I came home in '09, but you were also on a pen. Too. Yeah, and and cell phones was barely a thing. Like mm -hmm. I got out to flip phones when I got out of prison, and mm -hmm. I got out to the first iPods. <laughs> the iPod you know I mean? Nano or Mini or whatever. Yeah, well, I got the like shuffle. three of them that I have up here that I normally. Uh, Wait, you got one? Yeah, dude, I got a app. I, I got a touch. One. I got one of the little ones that used to clip, yeah. and then I got one of the long ones. That like the stick. Yes, the iPod it's a shuffle. blue one. I remember yeah. I had one. Yeah, I couldn't do? believe when I come up from prison. When I went in, it was like you had all these CDs in your car, and now there was seven hundred songs with a thing smaller than a credit card. I couldn't Crazy. believe that. That was nuts. Yeah. Crazy. Right? Do you remember anything specific that stands out? Like you went in, it was this way. You got out, it was this way. Smart TVs. Those okay. didn't exist before I went in. Um, at t even TV prices in general. I remember growing up, you wanted a 40-inch flat screen TV. It was like twelve or 1400 bucks. Now you got a 40-inch for fucking 200 bucks. You know why? Mm. Because they want you to be brainwashed by all the bullshit on there. Well, I don't know about any of that. That's what I, I think. All the news that they put out all the time. It's just crazy. That's how, why there's a TV in every room. How, you can go in there and regurgitate that shit everywhere. I'm shocked the prices of TVs really fell off like that. Like they used to be, like the iPhone prices are all the phone prices keep going up, but the mm -hmm. TVs, I don't keep know, going just, down. yeah. I guess that's a good. You point. You could literally get a nice flat screen TV for 150 bucks all day. Yeah. I got a 70 inch, and mine was 600. 
Yeah, I got the one at the studio, I think is 65 and I got that on a steal, like 350 or 400 bucks. Right, and it depends on the brand and all that too, yeah, but I don't but even cares care about that. If you're that. just doing the smart TV, like, yeah, I don't I'll, understand. I'll spend $100 a shit. year if it just, you know, if it breaks in five years, I spend 500 I'm but good like, with that. But like, that is literally so fascinating, the TV aspect, mm -hmm. you know? And, and then then AI as well just, too. Yeah, AI, it's that crazy. didn't exist. Yeah, if you went to prison just two years ago and you came out now, that this whole thing of AI. Big difference. Big difference. Big difference. I also just started using AI for my business, and I was mm -hmm. showing you it because someone showed me a couple months ago, and it it makes a job there. It's I can see how it's eliminating so many jobs. Yes, I really can. Yeah, and that that was that whole big writer strike and all that stuff was about in Hollywood for a while, wasn't it? Yeah, I heard some crap about that. They was on strike because AI was writing everything that they were supposed to be doing. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah, definitely craziness. Well, yeah, man, I appreciate you coming. You know, man, you made a lot of time for me today. That means a lot, bro. That no, that's, like something that, that's something that that's something that just you. you know what I'm saying. It means something because a lot of people just don't do that. So yeah. you well, know, you came much on my show. You know, I got to return the favor. Right. And I'm always a. F I keep fucking hitting. This that's button. because I don't have an adjuster, right? No, it's okay. It's my big hands, you know. <laughs> Um, but dude, I always got you, man. You need advice. You need anything, you know, I'm yeah. always a phone call. I wish I would have recorded all that today because, uh, there's a few things I was just thinking <laughs> about just now. I was like, damn, he said this and this and this, and I might be hitting you up like, yo, yeah. can you make a video in and tell me how to do that again? Now, but I'll figure it out, man. You definitely told me a couple of things today. I'm going to take the advice and, and put that shit to work Yeah, and see how it works. Knowledge is power sure. in this Absolutely. business because otherwise you're spent kicking out thousands Mm -hmm. to people because i see what the prices go for and what people are charging it's just so easy now yeah people should not be paying four or five hundred bucks for a podcast episode when you can learn to do so much on your own mm -hmm. you know that's why our rates are affordable too when people use our studio it's very affordable mm -hmm. so you rent your studio out yeah we rent the studio out i do editing um we do clips we do everything you know and there's nothing really like it in this area Right. I because like I remember when I was doing the club, you wanted a after movie made or any type of movie or anything. Um, it was thousands of dollars. Like the I, the the film companies that are still in the Stone Age. Like if you go to a like I feel like that era of like these fancy videos that's dead because everything could just be shot on an iPhone or what. I mean, look at you're shooting things on an mm -hmm. iPhone right now. But the idea of like going and s spending five grand on a thirty second clip. There's no return on that. What are you going to do right. with that? And I, right. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, it definitely doesn't. I remember looking into seeing the editors, and it was like four episodes for 450 or something like that, and you get a subscription crazy. and all these things. And I was like, man, that's crazy. I'll learn how to do it first. Where do you store all this stuff when it's moving? Uh, SD cards. No, no, like the, all the equipment. Oh, yeah, I got to tie everything up. Oh, it all gets tied uh, Yeah, up. I got a bunch of bins inside the cabinets right there. Mm -hmm. So everything that's loose goes into bins, and then it gets tucked away. What and about all the this paintings, gets... the painting stuff? Yeah, all that stuff's nailed on. Okay, So cool. none of that stuff's going to fall off. And then these windows right here, right? See the knobs on them? Yeah. So I can take these off. They're soundproofed, and then there's this piece of solid metal in there. So I can take them off, get air in here mm. if I want to. What's the thing behind you? Does that open up? So this lays down. This is where the bed used to be. Is the bed still on there? No. So the bed would be here right laying on me right now. You, you should have kept the up. bed. Yeah, but I didn't want it. So what do you And do it was it? it was like uh, mildewed and, and it stunk. So what's in there now? So this folds down now. Nothing nothing's in there. This is the outside of the trailer. The where other was, side of this is the front. Where was the kitchen? Yeah, where are you guys cooking shit? You were saying that's in the back. It's, it goes bigger? Yeah, so back there's a mm -hmm. toy hauler. So back there's where I could put a golf cart or a couple dirt bikes or a side-by-side oh, -side or something and take it with me. Really? Like when I go to Michigan to ride these dunes with one of my old sullies. And you bring this with you, too? Yeah, I'm hoping to. Like, everything worked great coming up here today, so I'm hoping it works the same way. Oh, is way. this your first time traveling with it? This far, yes. Okay. You know what I mean? I've been around a little bit. But this still folds down and makes, like, a flat spot, so I want to turn this into where I can shoot from right there, and you can be sitting outside on, like, some bar stools. You know what I mean? And it would hold as many as four people. Is there people. windows out there, too? No, well, this is it. This folds right down. Oh, okay. This puts down and it goes flat. It would be like a table or something for you to stand on out there. You could also, um, like, put an air mattress in here when you're traveling. Yeah. There's a yeah. lot of options. Well, there's bunks in the back. so there's Oh, there's still bunks there's, right there? I got two bunks. Actually, three. So there's two bunks that fold down, and then there's another one that's a queen-size oh, so bed. And it folds up into two little tables so I can sit down and eat. What used to be in this spot right here? So that corner was a shower. Okay. Oh, okay. there was a shower? Yeah, right so here? that was a shower. That was a Holy whole bathroom. That God. whole corner was a shower and a mm. toilet and a sink. And then you moved over this way. There was a refrigerator. 
and then you moved over a little bit more. There was the heater, and then there was a thing right here to sit on. That's so and cool. then over here, there was a counter, and they had uh, uh, the everything that you would have for a kitchen. Microwave up top. It had a sink. It had a stove. Um, and then there was a little place to sit right here. One of my good uh, friends has a um, trailer, like one of those brand new ones that mm -hmm. he uses as his house. Mm -hmm. Up in California, he just lives it in a trailer park, but it's like decked out. Right. It's got like the Wi Fi unit, the TV built in. Like it, it's fucking fancy. And when <laughs> they make them right, they make them right because everything's built in to maintain space. And then the, the ones that fold out, like the guy I bought this one from, he used this one first, but the one he has now folds out. It's as big as a double wide trailer. Mm -hmm. Like it's got an island in the middle. It's got a fucking the cathedral yeah dude it's it's huge incredible yeah then you know you're talking i don't know 75 80 grand uh, but he does racing so he's into all that kind of stuff so cool yeah but it's yeah, exciting man, it's to see this come to life jamie yes I'm man and like i said we man. talked about it a year ago i appreciate that it's been a lot of work man it has but I, I hope it pays off and i hope it helps some people for real you know what i mean like we was talking about with steven earlier in the other you know when we was in in your studio like I just hate seeing shit like that happen to people, man. And this happened a lot around my area, bro. There's people dying every day from fentanyl. It's killing them every day. Yeah. You know, every day there's a new report. Somebody's texting or somebody's saying something. There's a RIP on, on Facebook pages. And it's just, I don't know, man. Uh, it, it, I feel like if, if I would have had something maybe to start my days to prior to like all this technology, because we didn't have none of that. I didn't have a place to go get information when I was a kid. I just didn't. You know what I mean? Yeah, you had encyclopedias and libraries, but who's doing that? Now it's so easily accessible. Like, if you want some help, you can look it up, right? You can Google it. You can, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, it's planting some of the things I've learned in people's brains, and maybe they'll think, like, you know, absolutely, I'm going to make this decision different based on what I learned from something else. Because yeah. I, I, I'm the guy that gets burnt. You can tell me it's hot, but I'm going to touch it. You know what I mean? It's just how I am. So, yeah, man, I'm going to stop taking up your time. we got to get some food, man. Yeah, you're good, man. But I, I appreciate, appreciate you. Thanks for having me. You should get those uh, mic covers that will have, like, your logo mm -hmm. on, on I it. Seen, I picked one up in your in your shop today. Yeah, go to impactpbs.com. They have okay. those. Yeah. And what do you think YouTube of these logo. little jumps? Yeah, where do you get these? these yeah, are cool. uh, nine bucks a piece, man. Well, from $9. where? Uh, I got them on Amazon. And what do you just search? Microphone covers? Yep. Uh, sure, S SM7B what microphone colors covers. I got red and blue. And then they do an orange. You I see, saw Mike, Mark Agnew. Yeah, he's got orange. the orange. And then I think they do a light blue, dark blue, red. I want a white one. I want red, white, and blue. Yeah, I feel like white might work for my show if I have a white one because mm -hmm. it sticks out. Yes. But the black is also very dramatic, too. Right. I don't know. I have the white logo boxes down. But white might look cool. Yeah, man. I like them. I just think it gives it a little something different. Yeah, and it matches the bright colors, you know, because it's like I put a tattoo thing into it, black and gray and then a pop of color. It's kind of what my idea was. scope it out. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Jamie. Yeah, I man, I'm going to give you a little tour and let you check out the back. But I appreciate it, man. Yeah, of course. Absolutely.